Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm the Strange Professor. Doing a little coaching session for a bard here for, uh, or Corvy. Special thanks to Corvy for the generous donation. If you'd like to donate for a coaching session yourself, just email me at thestratchprofessor at gmail.com. Let me know what you have in mind. Uh, we can set that up. Oops, sorry, I don't know why. Wrong button there. Um. Okay. Um, so it's just $25 if you're not a channel member. If you are a channel member, it's just $20. You can become a member by hitting that member button on YouTube through a link in the description. Um, in PayPal is another option, or you can um, be a Twitch sub. We don't stream on Twitch, but if people still want to donate with like a, a Twitch Prime that they have or something like that, um, you know, I still have the account around for that. Okay, and this is patch 924B, so it's like at the very end of the preseason, right before Season 10 starts. We're looking at Bard here. And I am streaming this as well. We start streams most nights around 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So come by, check it out. Super friendly community. You might hear me chatting with the stream or answering questions um, that Corby has, but... Right, we'll fast forward through some of this here. Um, I would say try to get a ward down early on. I've been doing that a little bit more. Uh, just... Anywhere, you, like, you can place one defensively to help you. Was that one yours? I didn't see if that was yours. If that's yours, then you got it. I, Sorry, I was, like, looking at the chat or something. But I've been trying to place, like, more offensive wards. One good one is if you think, you know, they're not going to be middle or whatever, if you can put, like, wards on the raptors, that helps out a ton. Your jungler sort of figure out the pathing of the enemy jungler. Or even just, like, trying to ward the scuttle, especially if you have ghost poro. You get extra vision time. So that can help you see if they're, like, going scuttle. Lee Sen in particular is kind of difficult to track because he can sort of go almost anywhere. He has a bunch of different routes, and he does have a pretty dangerous level 2. Not as dangerous if he's, um, if he doesn't have red buff, but... Is there gens, like, AFK or something? Okay, he's top side. So y'all can keep pressuring. First, the members button is a join button. Okay, thanks, Kendall. Yeah, it says green button says join, I think, near the subscription button. Okay. So it's double kill to Lee. You gotta be a little careful with that. Um, see, it, since Jen's not here, see if you can rotate up. Maybe try to do something with that rumble off the next wave. Like, when you push in, it's gonna be a huge wave on the tower. Just see if you're going to show up and get Rumble Splash or something, maybe. Like, maybe roll up and, like, use your Bard thing through here to get around this ward. And just see if you can mess with Rumble a little bit. Put some fear in his heart. Especially because this was, like, basically a, you know, 2v1 lane. You can look to roam a little bit more early on. <coughs> Another option here, uh, once you push this in, see if you can go get Scuttle. You gotta watch out for Lee, but your Elise is going for Scuttle too, so. Um, you know, just be ready to back her up. If Lee, okay, Lee's middle. Okay, Rumble ignited. You can't really see the ignite from your mini map, but. Anytime a fight breaks out like that, if you can, try to watch it and see if you can see their flash. Even if the enemy um, doesn't ping the flash, if you see the person just, like, jump, you know, on the mini-map, and you know they don't have, like, a blink, then you know they flashed. And you can mark it for people. Okay, so Shaco flashed. Nice. Good job. <clears throat> uh, so push this. Push this out. Help him push this. You want to just push this up and back. Just go ahead. Just auto attack. Just auto attack the wave. Like, just use your Q, auto attack, everything. Yeah, you just want to help them get this in as fast as possible, and then you needed to back. Um, and then you may have had enough priority to try to make a play on Dragon. Yeah, you guys could go ahead and do it, but... If you would have backed and come back with, like, Moby Boots or something, I don't know how much gold you have, but you may be... Could have been in a better position for Dragon, but that's okay. It, it's a little spooky with Lee, like, being so fed early on, if you don't know where he is. 
Okay, so didn't have enough for Mobis. It's fine. Mm. I've seen a lot. Okay, they might actually be on Dragon right now. So the fact that y'all... Okay, maybe he's... Okay, so he probably just warded it <coughs> right here. So you'd want to ping that and t just let at least know that's probably warded. It's possible Lee is on it right now. Because y'all had a delayed back. Okay, no, he's right here. He just hit the um, dust. So be, you know, beware. If you saw that, you know, if you see that dust, be sure to ping that for your allies just so they know where Lee is. Now, of course, depending on your elo um, bracket, uh, your team may not pay attention to your pings, but it doesn't matter. You just should always do it just for good practice because some people will listen. Like, a lot of people won't think of, like, good decisions on their own, but they will listen to people a lot of times. Oftentimes, they'll listen even if it's a bad decision. You'd, you'd be surprised. The power of suggestion is um, really big. If you've ever served in a restaurant or something or did anything that deals with people, like advertising, anything like that. It's like everyone thinks they're immune to advertising, but everyone, like, advertising works. <laughs> people just don't like to think about it. Because the power of suggestion is just really strong. Okay, it's a gold three game. All right. Who got that kill? Rumble got it. Okay, he's taking sight. Your Nasus is getting crushed. Um, top lane, so y'all need to try to, like, you know, just know you're probably gonna have to carry him. So you might need to step up the aggression a little bit here. Yeah, auto attack. Good. Good setup. Yeah, just keep... Okay. That was good. Push the wave. I think. I mean... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rotate, rotate. Nice. Nice tunnel. Oof, would have been nice to hit that Q, but it happens. Okay, good. Um, yeah. Just disengage off of that, I think. We, you don't have vision over there. Rumble might have his ult. He doesn't. But I don't know if you track that mid lane or not. Um. Okay, I guess. Oof. Sorry, I got distracted for a second. Was Lee? Lee's not dead, is there? Was he dead? Let me back up a little bit. It's kind of late. I <laughs> kind of zoned out for a second. There. Okay. Um, <coughs> okay. Okay, yes, Lee's dead. He was resetting. Elise. Probably going to die to Dragon. Um, oh, oh, oh. No, he's dying to Shaco. Okay. Okay, yeah, with both junglers dead, I mean, it's a little spooky to do that because, you know, Shaco could just come in and, like, shiv it or something, but... I, I guess. I guess that's probably okay. No, he tried. I don't know. It's spooky. I guess if you lose, like, one dragon early on, it's not a huge deal. It's basically a 50-50. Like, everyone's going to throw their, you know, 100 damage ability and just hope. All right, Q, 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 Q. Watch out for the kick. Oh, you just, you just didn't have any mana for anything. Okay. There were no shrines around. No. Okay. No. Oh. Sometimes you just don't have the mana. Yeah, I mean, it's not a terrible play. It's just a 50-50 on an objective that's not, like, a huge deal. I mean, they've, they've nerfed the early dragons a lot. It's nice if you get it. I mean, you guys do have a higher probability of getting it because you have three people throwing, you know, three abilities at it <coughs> um, versus just the Shaco. 
So it's probably like 70, 30 or something that you guys are going to get it. Mmm, that's... Do you have Moby's? I would have gotten Moby's there instead of Fiendish Codex. I mean, Moby's the most important item on Bard because, like, he's so good at roaming. He is, like, the roam master. And he really needs to get the chimes also. <clears throat> so you, like, you have to have Moby's, like, ASAP, I think, on him. Looks like you're going Athenes. That's what a lot of people are doing. I think it's a pretty solid, solid build. Some people just go, like, straight into Redemption. Some people do Twin Shadows. I don't like the Twin Shadows build as much because you don't get the, um... Glacial Augment. <clears throat> yeah, I, I like Athenes. Athenes and a Redemption, I think, is pretty good on almost anybody. You can utilize um, the AP. Okay. Uh, okay, your ward item's not upgraded yet. One other thing I would suggest also, now they might change this on 10 1, so be sure to check out you know, my tier list and patch notes, but I would highly consider getting the Relic Shield instead of Spell Thieves, because it's pretty much guaranteed that you're going to get your wards on time. Versus with Frostfang, if, you know, there's just a lot of skirmishing like this, where everyone's just sort of running around, um, or if you get zoned off or camped or whatever, like, you might fall behind on your stacks. I can't, I don't think I can see, oh, the, it's not telling me how many stacks you have. I don't know if I can see that in the replay client. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can. 451. So, like, it's not that bad, but a lot of times with Relic, you can get your wards by... Huh. So, did you have that the whole time? Let me see. Or did your ult just literally come up right there? Yeah, you want to ult him immediately. Like, as soon as he pulls that up, you need to just ult him, and that'll stop him from ulting. So that's one of those things where, like, I'm sure you just kind of panic there because there's a lot going on. That's one of those things where just, like, just think about the matchup a little bit and just say to yourself when the game starts, like, <coughs> I'm going to look to ult Jen if he ults. I just know that interaction and just kind of be ready for it. And so just, like, once you guys get low there, you should be expecting him to ult. And as soon as he does, you ult him, and um, it'll shut him up. But, I, like, it's hard to make that decision on the fly because there's so many different things you can do with Bard's ult. So you really have to think, sort of, like, in the load screen when the game's going on, like, okay, what are the best situations for me to use this ult this game? Because it's it's one of the most versatile and sort of unusual ults in the game. It takes one of the biggest, like, decision-making ults ever because it's just, like, so many ways you can use it, you know? And it can really actually hurt your team if you misuse it, so... You want to think carefully about that, but that's, you know, that's one thing that should definitely be on your radar, is anyone who has a channeled ult, especially a long-range one, so like Zerath, um, Misfortune, Caitlyn, Jen, all of these are good candidates to look to try to ult him when they ult. Jen, you actually have a decent amount of time to do it. Caitlyn, you'd have to be really fast. And I think she gets a, a refund on her ult if you ult her, but... Jin, you should have plenty of time to ult him. If you're looking for it. Okay. Um... Yeah, I mean, it do, it gives a slight bit less AP. Now, they are changing the numbers on some of these things next patch. Um... But to me, just getting those wards on time... Is... Is worth. But... Speaking of wards, you need to get some deep wards. You have it transformed, right? Yes. Um, so I'm going to do a new vision guide for like where vision should go, but you want to try to push up here if you can. So just start like auto-attacking the wave. I know you have empowered autos and everything, but... Okay, nice. You got him? Do flashes ult him? Okay, good. <clears throat> yeah, so push this up and go look for vision. Right, you gotta be a little careful with Lee. But I, I would... I would at least try to ward that. Okay, there's... Okay, that's bad. You're gonna have to ult him, I think. As soon as he popped over that wall, I would ult him immediately. Because, like, he's gonna get you. If you don't ult him immediately. 
and just like tunnel through this wall. So like it is kind of dangerous. That's why I was saying just like maybe ward over this wall and like peace out because you don't know where he is. Um, but uh, you spent quite a bit of time just kind of like indecisively hanging out in this area, which could be warded. I don't remember if you swept it or not, but it, it could be warded. So I would just come over here if you don't know where Lee is, just ward here and like here. You already had one there, but it's about to die. So you could have refreshed that one. <clears throat> and then maybe like just ward here or something. Thraxus asks, how much does preseason rank affect the new season rank? Uh, it's, they don't tell you the exact formula, but a lot. So it's basically, you're gonna start off, I think it's something like, wherever your current division is, they start you like five divisions lower, roughly, and then every placement game that you win, uh, moves you up a lot early on. So you get like 100 LP or something effectively for every placement game that you win. It's something like that. It's not that exact math, but it's something along those lines. But yeah, the biggest determining factor is where your, um, what your rank is at the end of the preseason. Okay, so when you need to know if you should leave your ADC or not, you need to put them in the tower. Like, you need to push the wave to give you priority, and then you leave. Like, if you don't get priority... One thing, you, like, you haven't really been um, auto-attacking the wave that much or, like, trying to push it. <clears throat> if you don't push your wave, you can't really roam. Or it's very hard because they'll collapse on you like that right there. And if you don't have vision, it's also really hard to roam. So, like, roaming right there was not bad because your ADC is in the tower. Like, usually the best time to roam is when they're pushed into their tower, but the next best time is if your ADC has a freeze, like, right here. Um, but yeah, right here is not a good time. Well, she's backing. No, I mean, that that's her. She screwed that up. That I think that was an okay time to roam. But the problem is you don't have any... Oh, you, you did refill your wards. Okay. So yeah, that's her fault. She should have backed in a safer place. <clears throat> but yeah, when she wants to recall, that's a good time to roam too. Yeah, I mean, you should just have your chat disabled in general. That's what I think. So it doesn't really matter if they complain about whatever. Like, you just need to um, just make the best decision. If they AFK, they AFK. It's fine. Whatever. Next game. <coughs> That's another place right there where you need to be looking for him to ult and then ult him. You probably die there anyways. So maybe you just don't use your ult. Oh, your ult's down. Okay. So you can't do it there. Um... But yeah, in general, you want your lane to be pushed in, or you want them to be back when you roam. It is kind of tricky as Bard, because you do want to hold on to your empowered autos, but at the same time, like, you can't really push the wave without your autos. And your autos do AoE damage, so they can push it pretty quickly. So yeah, I, I would try to push and roam. <coughs> Or whenever you back like this, that's decent. Um, decent spot there. Nice, nice. Okay, you might get him. Good. You got ult? Ult him. Mm. Maybe a little bit faster. After you killed the Lee, maybe immediately ult the... Uh... But there is a minion wave coming into you, and you don't you don't know where everybody else is. And that Gnosis is pretty weak right now, and he didn't look like he was feeling it. So, maybe. Maybe not ult. Um, that's, that's a tough call. After reading kind of the Gnosis' body language and thinking about the, the wave position there, maybe it was correct not to ult at all. <clears throat> Although, I think if you ult that rumble, he would have... Well, he didn't have his flash, I guess. Sometimes you can just, like, bluff that people are there and get their flash off your ult. But... Okay, be careful going too far. Like, you need to try to get some vision down, like, over here, over here... Um, get those control wards down. Like, the most important place is the ward. <coughs> Probably right now, if you, if they're not clearing them all the time, is, like, somewhere in here, in this kind of triangle. 
Um, and then somewhere in here. Oh, you're going Nashers early? Mm, I don't, I don't like the Nashers build. I mean, that is good, like, later on, I guess. Like, it does give you more personal damage, but I would probably do Athenes. I wouldn't do, I wouldn't do Twin Shadows. People are saying in the chat. Um, I think Athenes is where you want to be. Because Athenes pairs really well with Redemption, and, like, you put out pretty good damage with your meeps, which means that, you know, whenever you, like, cast your W on somebody, it's going to be a much bigger heal. <clears throat> Could also potentially go Ardent Sensor. I don't know what your secondaries are. If you took Font of Life as a secondary, you could go Art and Sensor. Wait, no, you have... You have the Magical Footwear. Okay, so you went. Probably Cosmic Insight Footwear. Hmm. I want to maybe just... If you wanted to go for that, just ult him. Like, you want to ult him... If Caitlyn's close... And you ult him, she should be able to put a trap on him. Yes. Ardent does work with Font of Life. People saying in chat, yes, the slow off of that does trigger Ardent Sensor. Or the, uh, the small heal that people get for auto attacking with Font does trigger Ardent Sensor. <laughs> You have so oh, you have sorcery second. Okay. Maybe I misread that. Um, yeah, I mean, you, if, if you're going for the um, Ardent Sensor Athenes, you can take, like, Font, Revitalize second. There's a lot of different things you can do on Bard, but... <clears throat> I mean, you don't have that many auto attackers, so, like, Ardent's... Red team has slain the dragon. Questionable. I, I think Athenes Redemption's probably where you want to be. Uh, the Spell Thieves and Lifesteal don't apply to other people, typically, so... Like, Font of Life works because the heal, like, whenever they auto-attack somebody and heal, the heal comes from you, not from them. That's why it works. Like, yeah, it doesn't work if they have, like, a Blade of the Rune King or something, because you're not doing the healing. They're doing the healing on themselves. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah, I mean, that sounds pretty reasonable. I, I don't know. Like, Nashers is alright. You're going to be able to put out good damage. Like, it's a good item for the price point. Um, it doesn't do a lot for your team, but it is a solid item. Okay, nice. Ultim, 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 ultim. Oh, wait, you don't have ult? I can't tell the... Okay, the bar. Yeah, you didn't have it there. Baron. Yeah, Baron, 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 Baron. Start, um, start putting down things. Really? Y'all are scared of Shaco? I don't know. I don't agree with that. Three people are dead, including their jungler. I feel like Gnosis could have tanked that. Gnosis has ult. Like, that ult shreds Baron. Does 4% max health. I mean, it's capped against monsters, but the Gnosis ult alone will do like 2,000 damage to Baron. I don't know about all that. He life steals. I would have done it. I want to ping Gnosis ult like three or four times and then just like ping Baron. Yeah, N Nostrus is really expensive, like people were saying in the chat. Like it's a good bargain, but it's just out of the support budget, sort of. You know, anything that's much past um, like 2,400 gold is difficult. I know, but you got to ping it a lot. You got to ping it a lot and then just like ping Gnosis, ping that their jungler is dead. Like, I mean, Shaco's kind of scary, I guess, but, like, if you put down your shrines, um, people can heal on the shrines. And Nasa should just be able to, especially with his ult and his Q spam, he should be able to life steal through it. Yeah, get the Q on him right there. Okay. You guys flash. <clears throat> no, you don't want to do wit -tend. You want, when you're a support, you want items that help your teammates. Because they're very, very cost efficient. Like, pretty much every item that helps your teammate is going to be, like, more cost efficient than something that's, like, a, a solo item. Like, Athenes is usually around, like, 150 to 200% efficient, depending on how much, 
like how well you use the passive and um, how much mana regen you have. Versus like an Infinity Edge or something is like 110% efficient. 110, 112, something like that. Ardent Sensor is often like 200 to 300% efficient. I would look at it here. I don't know. I mean, y'all don't have your AD carry with you. Cassidy is coming online. Yeah, he's he's online. <laughs> 11 kills. I would say he's he's doing well. Yeah, so right there, I don't know. I maybe would have taken a look at it like you can ward like you should have at least warded this up. Like drop a control ward here and then just like ward here, you know, ward over here. Like, just get Vision down. And then just play around that area. Like, they keep getting priority on these waves. Because every time your team gets a kill, like... You're not really getting a lot out of it, you know? Like, you need to be at least... Like, if you don't want to do Baron, you need to at least try to get Vision. Oh, that was a great ult. You need to at least try to get Vision and, um... Like, push the waves up. So that you can go, so that you have priority, and they have to go face check, and that's when you can like, you know, hit them with an Elise web or hit them with a Bard Q or something. Okay, nice slow. Well, now y'all want to do it when Lee's up. Nah, don't do it. She didn't have smite. Just push up middle. You got dragon coming. Just. Yeah, push middle. Yeah, I'm just gonna get dragon. It's fine. <clears throat> you need me try to get try to get vision around here. Yeah, you got one. You only have one ward on the map right now. Hmm. How did he get in there? There he is, yeah. So you gotta try to, like, get vision of him and zone him. I mean, I guess Kasten's going after him, but... If you kill him... Go take metal, go take metal. You got Kale over here. Lee's dead. I just... I would have gone to go take metal. Like, Y'all just aren't getting stuff. Like, you're winning fights, but you're not getting stuff. You don't really want to be doing Shrelia's on Bard. Probably. I mean, it's probably not terrible, but... Yeah, I mean... I don't, you, you may not have had wards there, but yeah, if you had any wards, like, there or there. Yeah, I mean... <clears throat> you just didn't have vision around here. I mean, that really shouldn't be... Like, if you think about, like, what's happened, you know, in the last little bit, that that's, like, the biggest thing to focus on here, is you guys have won, like, the last, like, three or four fights in a row, and they just got Dragon and Baron. And they still have their tier 1 mid up and their tier 1 top up. Like, that shouldn't happen. You know what I mean? So, like, you need to ping people. Like, after you guys win a fight, even if people don't want to do Baron, just, like, ping middle or, like, ping the tower or something. Or at least get deep vision. You know, like, you can at least come over. Even if your team just backs, you can at least get vision, like, all around their jungle after you kill them all. But yeah, so it's like you guys are winning the battle, but you're, like, winning all the battles, but you're losing the war. Because you're, like, not capitalizing on your victories. Reminds me of, uh... Minor spoiler. I mean, it's, it's an old show, but, like, uh, Rob Stark from Game of Thrones... The famous saying from Tywin there. I mean, he didn't come up with it. A lot of people say that, but, you know, Rob Stark never lost a battle but lost the war. Because <clears throat> he wasn't playing macro right. 
I guess he was, I mean, he, he was kind of playing his macro, right? Like, he did have some smart battles, but he wasn't playing politics well enough with his um, alliances and marriage decisions and things like that. Red buff secure, baby. All right, we got him. Well, that wedding shouldn't have existed. <clears throat> I don't know. It's It was tough. Game of Thrones is such a good show, man. It's just... Uh, I just get mad at everything. I, every time I think about the last two seasons... <coughs> Like, the first three seasons are, like, arguably the best, like, drama on TV of all time. It's really close. It's, like, Breaking Bad, and there's a couple other shows, but, like, the first, like, three seasons are just, like, insanely good. <clears throat> they're not gonna, like, they're not gonna redo it. Like, they, they're not gonna get all the actors and actresses together again and fund all of that. You know, there's a chance in the future they could do, like, you know, a... Um, you know, like a rework or whatever. But it's un it'd be like at least 10 years or something in the future, you know? Alright. Um, once again, the Gen Ult's a great, great time. To, like use your ult to shut him up but we've talked about that a lot honestly I don't know if he's gonna finish those books at this point I'm I don't I don't I don't think he's gonna get to the last book he might get to the next book maybe but you know I can't hate on him you know he can live his life he does what he can do whatever he wants but I would like to read the rest of the books, but at the same time, I get it. I mean... Life's hard, life's stressful, he's probably got enough money. You know, I'm sure he does. You know, it, it's his right, if he wants to chill, he can just chill. As a fan, I wish he'd finish the books, but at the same time, you know, I understand as a human being why he's loafing about probably with it. I mean... God knows I'm not always the most uh, <coughs> productive person. Hey, he's he's doing a bunch of other projects too and things like that. <laughs> anyway, so I think that last fight, I think a huge part of it was you needed to ult the... Um, you, you gotta ult those gen ults. Did they lose the Star Wars deal? I didn't even notice that. That's hilarious. I'm gonna have to look that up. Oh, you were dead before the last one went off? Really? Yeah, I forgot. Were they supposed to direct um, number nine? <clears throat> I mean, yeah, that was really terrible. Like the last season. Hold on, let me let me just look at this real quick. I mean, I get it. Here, well, I'll talk about that after the replay. Or at least let me look at this part here. I'm going to see the timings on some of this here. Okay, let's, let's look at this one more time here. Okay, yeah, you're, you're right. You're evaporated. Yeah, there's not much. You just got kind of caught and cut out there, cut off there. Yeah, there's not much, not much to do there. Um, oh, they weren't supposed to do episode nine, but they're gonna do like some other standalone things. 
Um, yeah. Well, here's the thing. Like, everyone wants to hate on Dan and Dave. And it's like, yes, the last few seasons were terrible, okay? We don't know, and I'm not trying to, like, defend them or whatever, but... You know, when they signed up for this show, the understanding was George is going to have all of these books done, right? By the time they finish, I'm almost positive they were told, hey, we're going to have the books done, okay? And they probably didn't even know, like, how successful the show was going to be. They may have thought, okay, you know, it's hard in showbiz. Sometimes you get canceled after, like, two or three seasons. They say, okay, we have enough material for, like, five seasons. And surely to God, George, over the next six years... It's going to take at least a year or two to get the pilot together and record the first season and all that. Over the next six years, surely he'll have, you know, at least one, if not both, of the books done. Who knows? The show might fail, and it just doesn't matter anyways. So, they signed up to be adapters of the books. That's, you know, and they were very good at that. You know, the first three seasons, four seasons, um, for the most part, were really, really good. Not just, like, the story that George wrote, but the way they brought it to life. You know, some of the lines they gave the actors. I thought some of the creative changes they made were really good. Um, you know, I liked how they handled um, the the mutiny. I thought it was really well done. I, I thought they did a lot of stuff really, really well. But George didn't finish the books. So now they had to go and basically write original content in this universe. And that's not what they signed up for. That's not obviously not what they're good at. So it's like, um, it's kind of their fault, but they also didn't sign up for that. Now, what they should have done, though, is they should have just realized they were in over their head. Um, there's nothing really to say here other than ping them back what you're doing. And they're just going to int and give the dragon. Um, oh, nice. Okay, just just run, just run. Oh, you're already, you're not there, so... Maybe Cassidy. Maybe Cassidy. I don't know if you can hold this by yourself. Um, but yeah, they should have realized they were in over their head, and they should have hired better writers. That's it. They could still be the showrunner, and like, they should have just delegated more. I think. Or they should have just paid George a lot. Maybe George didn't want to do it, but they should have just paid him a lot of money just to be, like, you know, one of the premier writers on there. Or just to, like, literally consult him about everything. <laughs> oh, is he? I didn't know that either. Um, but yeah, so I think they should have delegated more. Or they should have just stepped down, or so, you know, just had someone else be the showrunner, and then they just, like, take some money. You know, what, whatever. They should have delegated better. Someone should have told them this is bad, and they should have delegated. Hey, what's up, Zero Fallen? We're just doing a coaching session here real quick, then we'll do one more rank. Oh, God, it's so late, though. Kind of a longer replay. Anyways, um, okay, so we've got a Thieves. Uh, I would not get Seeker's Arm Guard. I mean, they don't have that many AD threats that should be touching you, you know? Like, Jen shouldn't really be hitting you. Lee shouldn't be hitting you. I would have gotten Redemption after uh, Athene's. Or, um, or Shirelia's. I mean, Shirelia's at least gives you movement speed. Just some something team-oriented. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes you get random, you know, stream chatter. Random stream chat. No, I, Twin Shadows is not. I mean, it's, it's like, okay, but it's a really selfish item, I think. I don't know. It's... Yeah, he stepped a little too close there. It's going to be really hard to beat this Kale. I mean, Kassin might be able to do it, but... You don't need the mana regen off the of, um, redemption. You need the healing the team fight. Hey, thanks, Asworn. I appreciate it. The cooldown's too long to use it to ward. It's like minute 30.
Yeah, I mean, your team just <clears throat> basically like at the very end, you just, you just kind of got outscaled. Like the Cassidy obviously has really good scaling and he's strong, but um, you know the Kale and the Jen are just like so difficult to stop. Uh, late game. I think that, you know, the big thing was you guys were winning a ton of fights. You just weren't taking stuff. So, like, I know you said you were pinging Baron, but, like, you know, try to ping it more. Or, at least, like I said, get vision out of there. Like, just get some deep vision. Tell your team to push waves. Or if they're not going out and pushing the wave, you push the wave. Like, just go up with your meeps, push the waves, and get priority. Because what kept happening was you guys would win a fight, you'd back. And then all of the waves would be in your base, and you would spend the next two or three minutes, like, pushing the waves out. And so you never could get Dragon or Baron, and you didn't have, um, you know, deep vision coverage. So you just want to try to get that vision and then get your team to push out the waves. That way, whenever you go back to base and come back in, then they're stuck in the side lanes or wherever, you know, trying to push out waves. And then that gives you opportunities to make more plays, get more picks with your ult, you know, bait them around Baron more. Uh, it just it all starts with wave control and wave priority. And your team may not always listen to that. A lot of them are probably not going to understand that. Um, but you can at least ping it and try to, um, you know, try to get that going. But yeah, I, I think definitely getting the vision, trying to get better wave control, and just pinging them and trying to get them to do Barons and Dragons more often because people were just not like doing anything with the kills that y'all got in the mid game is that that really shouldn't happen like i said earlier where you win like four fights in a row and they get baron and dragon when they've been up the entire time for all four fights but anyways so i think that was so that's one thing to work on mid game just trying to tell your team like hey go push these waves if they're not doing it you know try to at least push one wave yourself after you get a kill like after you got those kills around mid you could have just walked over to mid and just, like, auto-attacked one of those waves down. Um, and then um, early on, we talked about roaming. See if you can push. Use your meeps to try to push the wave in. Don't get the CS, but just get it low so that your AD carry can push faster. And that gives you an opportunity to roam and, you know, maybe um, get some more chimes early on, get some of your upgrades online, get some deep vision so you can track the Lee Sin better, uh, potentially roam on Rumble. Rumble doesn't have very good escapes. There was that one opportunity to roam on Rumble that I talked about early on when you were level 3 and Jen hadn't showed up to lane yet and the Rumble was pushed up really far in his lane. You could have just walked up the river and just um, used your uh, magical journey through here to get around any ward they had there and then you come in behind the Rumble and either kill him or force a flash. I think that would have been good. Um, and just trying to get more roams in early and that all starts with pushing and getting deep vision. And then the other thing, so those are two things to work on. Early game, lane priority, roaming more, mid game, trying to get objectives or at least get lane pressure off of team fights that you win. And then um, using your ult to stop the gen ult is really big. Or just like working on ult usage in general. You can also, um, I'm like 99% sure you can ult the Kale when she ults too. I don't think it makes her immune to CC. Um so if that's a thing, too, if she's, like, trying to ult herself, you can ult her so that she can't, like, do anything while she's ulting. This is a possibility. Um, but yeah, just look for opportunities like that. Especially, you know, the Gen 1 is very telegraphed and very easy to hit. Um, just whenever, you know, you see that come out, if you have your ult, just shut him off. Um, I think that's about it. The itemization we talked about a little bit, I think Athene's Redemption is probably... Um, gonna be the strongest thing right now. Let me just look really quick at the end of the video here. I haven't really played Bard in a while, and I don't play bar against Bard that often, but <clears throat> like these people are getting like Twin Shadows and Redemption, but I don't know if the pro build's updated yet. They have some. Like, this started over um, or a lot of pros don't play that too often. It's like one guy who keeps rushing Dead Man's Plate. Max Lore, I guess. Yeah, Mickey's doing it too. I don't know about the Dead Man's Plate. Maybe that's the new technology. Um, 
for a while there, a lot of people were doing uh, redemption or um, Athenes into redemption. There's still quite a few Athenes. <clears throat> yeah, there's there's not a good sample size of data because there's some weird stuff here. Um, like rapid fire cannon. These people might just be trolling around, just trying out builds, just basically Mickey. Um, I don't know. There's three different people that are going dead man, though. So maybe I just don't know. Maybe I don't know the new stuff. Um, but anyways, I, I think that something, I think Nashers is probably not the ticket there, but it's up to you. Either way, like a lot of items can work. No items are great on him. It's like there's okay items. He's not really all about his items, so it doesn't matter as much. But just work on those other three things, and that should help you out. But anyways, um, that's going to be it. Thank you very much. Anyone else that would like a coaching session, just email me at thestrategyprofessor at gmail.com. Let me know what you have in mind. Uh, we can set that up. It's just $25. If you're not a channel member, if you are, then it's just $20. Um, and, yeah, the stream's going to continue. We'll play one more game, so I promise that we would. And come by, check out the stream if you're watching the video. It starts around 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every night. We'd love to have you. Wonderful, very chill community. And otherwise, I'll see you everybody next time.